All right, I guess I should do an intro for this before I just start talking about gameplay. Uh, Capcom has dropped some, uh, a character guide for Aki going over all of her moves, how they work, and how they all fit together. And we're going to watch it, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to try not to be huge squealing fanboys the entire time, because this character looks so cool. Uh, this, this, this one's just for the YouTube watchers, but when Aki comes out on the 27th, I will be streaming a ton of Aki stuff. So if you want to see me learning Aki, taking her to Master Rank and beyond, then make sure to tune in on the Twitch channel. She's a tricky character that's tough to deal with. That's what I need in my life. I don't want any of these easy to deal with characters. It's hard to say what archetype they're gonna they're, they're gonna make her. To be honest, Fang was mostly a zoner with some bullshit corner pressure. Aki looks a little bit different. She might be more of like a hybrid. It looks like the health drain is pretty slow. It's, it looks about the same as it was in Street Fighter V. By the way, that's so sick. Did you guys notice this? I didn't notice this the first time I watched this footage, right? Did you guys notice that when she creates the bubble of poison, it's Fang's head? Up here in the top left in the taunt. She's making a little fang out of poison. That's cute. That's a cute little detail. She's simping for her master. Yeah, she made the bubble buddy version of fang. Yeah, so if Aki gets hit, the poison goes away. So that's exactly the same as fangs in, uh, in 5. Yeah, so here we are. This is the mechanic that I talked about in the last video. I called it Retribution because I'm a shameless Gil fan. It's actually called Toxic Blossom. I should have read the PlayStation blog because it did say there as well. But yeah, if you land with certain moves on poisoned opponents, you get a bunch of bonus effects. Reading is for chumps. So like, for example, this looks crazy. This is her like, uh, kind of anti-air angled version of the whip. If it activates the Toxic Blossom, this actually uh, crumples. Kind of crazy. All right, so first up, we got Aki's fireball. This looks like a very good projectile. Two reasons. Two reasons why immediately I think this projectile is going to be very strong. One, it's very slow, and in Street Fighter, slow fireballs are almost always better. The slower, the better, especially in this game, because you can follow in behind it with a drive rush. Slow Fireball plus Drive Rush is extremely strong in this game. There aren't many characters that can do that. At the moment, it's like Guile and Chun-Li, pretty much. So that's number one. Slow Fireball that you can Drive Rush behind is going to be automatically good. The other thing is, it does look like Aki is just doing Fireball from a neutral stance. She's not walking back and she's not crouching. So... It does seem to be the case that Aki is not a charge character. It looks like she can just throw out the fireball whenever. And uh, there we go. So she has a follow-up to her fireball, where she can stab it with the uh, the whip, the chain, and that causes it to detonate. They show they show one use for it here, which is that. Uh, so when when Chun is in her stance, she can low profile fireballs. This is not this is not her regular crouch animation. Before people say it, I was worried at first that like uh, characters might be able to crouch under Aki's fireball, but this is not a regular crouch. This is Chun's uh, stance crouch. So this is this is like a unique thing. So they show it being used the detonation to blow it up while she's trying to crouch under it, which is a, a kind of a niche use, but. That's one cool thing you can do. So you can use it as a combo tool, as they show here, and a pressure tool. And this is another huge thing. This is another huge thing. So in Street Fighter V, Fang could cancel the recovery of his up fireballs into his EX uh, command dash, the slide. And it was extremely strong in that game. But the only downside was that uh, because it was the up fireballs, you were sort of vulnerable if you could position yourself right so that you meet Fang before the fireballs come down and you hit him out of it. 
Whereas because Aki has a normal horizontal fireball, like a standard fireball, this combo looks extremely good. You can get, if someone jumps your fireball, you can just get out of the entire situation for two bars. Uh, if you want to approach from full screen, you probably can for like cross ups and stuff. This looks extremely good. So there's the EX fireball. Better recovery. Multiple hits. Look at that. So here's the other thing is that like, as I mentioned earlier, slow fireball plus drive rush is good and rare in this game. But the characters that have it right now, characters like Guile and characters like uh, Chun, their drive rushes aren't that fast. So they can't actually really overtake their own projectile. They can just about keep up with it. Like, I think Guile's drive rush is roughly the same speed as like Boom. Look how much faster Aki's drive rush is than her fireball. This is crazy. She runs to full screen and actually overtakes the fireball, which I think doesn't... I don't think any character can do that right now. Or not easily, at least. Fast Drive Rush plus Slow Fireball is a crazy combo. Yeah, so this is the this is the Poison Pool. This is sort of... They've done an interesting thing where they've kind of reversed Fang's projectiles. So it, you, in Street Fighter V, Fang had his V-Skill 1, which was a projectile that had no hitbox. It was just an unblockable like thing that did zero damage. But if you got hit by the projectile, you were just poisoned. Um, and then he had the cloud, which he could put down on the ground, and that was an actual projectile hitbox. For Aki, they pretty much flipped the two of them back to front. So now the, the cloud is now this pool of poison on the floor, which has no hitbox. This does no damage, it just poisons you. And the fireball is now a proper fireball, which is probably an upgrade, all things considered. So yeah, you get poisoned if you're anywhere near it. You can't block. Yeah, in the corner, you're kind of screwed. You can also use it to bait people into jumping. This anti-air normal looks good. I don't know what this is. I'm guessing stand heavy kick, but I'm not sure. Hopefully this gives a juggle on counter hit. That would be extra nice. Cool combo. God damn. Alright, there's a lot to talk about there. First things first, in this clip, we get a good look at Aki's warp speed. And she's grooving. She has actually got pretty fast warp speed, as well as a fast drive rush. She does seem to move around pretty quickly. But we get this cool combo with a bunch of uh, toxic blossoms and drive rushes to extend the juggle. Now what's interesting about the end of this combo here is this. So this is the uh, Coward Crouch Dive follow-up that she's doing at the end of the combo. And because this is activating Toxic Blossom, it seems to have the bonus effect of doing like a super hard knockdown. This reminds me of Rashid's Heavy Eagle Spike. Look how long Chun is stuck tumbling for before she can get up here. Rolling back, rolling back, and then gets up. So you have enough time with Aki on this knockdown to put down the Poison Pool in the corner and still have plus frames. Like, that's crazy Oki right there. Forced, forced poison, and plus frames. So we've got Toxic Wreath. This looks like basic combo filler. I haven't seen any use for this thing. It just looks like a combo ender. You just stick this at the end of, like, a hit confirm. It's nice to know that she has a good, uh, a good jab confirm right here. This is reassuring. Uh, three lights into special, and apparently, according to the text, because I am reading, <laughs> according to the text, uh, this is also safe on block. So, juggle, juggle filler, combo filler, jab ender, poisons the opponent. Looks good. Yeah, if you do it in juggles, you get an extension as well. God, that Oki looks so good. That That's tumbling knockdown on the dive. That looks so, so useful. I think that's going to be like the basis of her corner pressure. Put down the cloud. 
and then say goodbye to your opponent's health bar. This is a pretty cool combo in general. This is a corner DI combo. Where is it? Yeah, corner DI combo here. It looks like she has pretty good juggle potential on most of her tools. So we've got Serpent Lash. This is her, like, whip with three different angles. Again, she's doing all of these from an idle stance, so 99% chance she's not charge unless they're using, like, dynamic controls for the demonstration. This looks really good for anti-air. The, the upwards one... I don't know if this is going to be a DP input. This looks fast. It looks like Aki's uh, hurt box shrinks down to the floor. And I think you get a juggle after this on uh, uh, Toxic Blossom. That looks like a very good anti-air. So you use light for space control. I wonder what this is on block. It looks like the kind of move that's probably unsafe, but spaced in a way that you can't really punish it. So yeah, the medium version gives you a crumple into a target combo, I think. And the heavy version is the anti -air. Yeah, it says right here, you can follow up on this attack if it triggers Toxic Blossom. You guys know me, one of my favorite things in Street Fighter, one of my requirements to play a character in any Street Fighter game is does the character have good juggles for anti airs? I like taking 50% of your life bar for pressing up forward. I hate getting jumped in on. It pisses me off. So I always pick characters that have like juggling anti airs. You know, Oro had it, Dalsim had it, uh, uh, JP has it. And I'm glad to see that Aki also has it. I mean, look at this. Like, this isn't even a jump in. Aki is doing this against Spinning Bird Kick, and it immediately low profiles it. So I'm going to go ahead and assume this move has like some degree of anti-air invincibility. Maybe it is just like a, a DP in everything but name. Yeah, there's the juggle. I assume you can get more than this. I'd be surprised if that was the entire combo. You can probably do a Drive Rush or something. So this is the cool one. This is the EX version of her chain. She stabs you and then pulls herself back in. It, it poisons the opponent and you get a link afterwards on hit. Even without Toxic Blossom. This is a combo extender. And look at the range on this thing. Like, can you... you the fact that you can hit from here... This looks fast and it's got huge range. You can hit from nearly full screen and you still get Jab Jab Special afterwards. And the crazy thing is, because this inflicts, because the uh, EX chain always inflicts poison, that means that the uh, the follow-up combo you get is always going to be a Toxic Blossom follow-up. So you can do Jab, Jab, Uppercut, Toxic Blossom, and then another chain. So that looks like a very good combo tool. And the Toxic Blossom version of the EX stab, as shown here, rather than just linking a jab afterwards, it activates a full crumple, and you get a big combo afterwards. You can even do multiple in a row. Cruel Fate. This is a weird move. She has like a command jump, which goes over fireballs and stabs you a hundred times in the face. Different button presses change the uh, the angle. It says you're still at an advantage even if, if blocked. Oh, is this a mis mistranslation? Let's do some sleuthing. I like to check things. I've just taken a photo that's translated for the power of AI. And it says... The distance traveled by this technique changes depending on the type of button you press. Even if you're at a disadvantage because you're being guarded, you won't receive a counter-attack. Okay. We have confirmation based on the magic of my phone. Uh, the English version of this is wrong. This is not plus on block. I think the EX version might be plus on block. It's safe. I think it's safe but minus. So expect it to be like minus one to minus three. So yeah, this is... Uh, 
not tr translated properly. Yeah, I guess I guess that's why they're showing it off like that. They're showing off that Chun presses a button afterwards and Aki can block in time. If it was plus on block, they wouldn't demonstrate it like that. If you perform the heavy version. So only the heavy version lets you link off afterwards as well. So this is probably quite a niche move. EX version activates like a hit grab effect and poisons them. This is interesting. I think they say this is plus. Yeah, so the EX version is a little bit weird. Oh, there we go. So the EX version... Yeah, the EX version is plus on block. That one we do know about. The other thing that's a little bit interesting is that uh, if the EX version hits on a grounded opponent, it triggers a uh, like a cinematic hit grab effect. But notice here, if it hits on an airborne opponent, it causes a ground bounce and you get a combo afterwards, which is a little bit weird. Kind of unique. Snake step. So this is uh, what was previously Fang's command dash. It goes through projectiles. The non the non EX version of this wasn't very good in uh, Street Fighter V, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's true in this game as well. Like there aren't many situations where realistically you're gonna want to command dash straight at the opponent on a hard read that they're gonna do like legs in neutral. So. Yeah, maybe it's an Oki tool just to kill frames. Sure. But the regular version wasn't very good in Street Fighter V. It was just occasionally good for getting under certain projectiles. So she has a feint as well, which is a little bit weird. She can do... If she does the light version of the dash, she feints it. Which, again, I mean, could be useful. But, like I said, going by Street Fighter V, which is all I really have to go off, uh, the feint wasn't that good. Maybe you can use it as a combo extender. Maybe you can do like a normal into the feint and be more plus than if you just press the normal by itself. That's also a possibility. Some characters can do that, I think. DJ, thank you. DJ, yes. DJ can cancel into a feint to extend combos. Alright, so this is the interesting one. EX version... It says in the description, you cannot be hit by any attacks except for throws while in motion. So in the previous gameplay video, I did point out that even when the Chun player attempted to punish Aki right at the end of the EX dash, it still wasn't a punish. It seemed like she was invincible for the entire thing. Uh, and I was I was thinking that, was, that looked pretty crazy, but it does seem to be the case based off the text here. Aki's EX dash really is just fully no recovery to anything except for throws. If big if true, uh, we'll have to find out when she actually comes out, but this could be very spammable. This is like the, the exact opposite of uh, JP's EX amnesia, I think. If it works the way they say it works, where it's like EX amnesia uh, absolutely bodies you for going for a meaty throw, but is vulnerable to other stuff. Whereas this, like, gets you out of everything except Meaty Throw. So Throw Loops are going to be good against Aki, probably. Man, it's going to be so annoying. So many, like, Fang players were notorious in Street Fighter V for never blocking on Wake Up. They would either do EX Dash, or Wake Up Jump, or Wake Up Jab, or Wake Up Super, anything. Except blocking on Wake Up. And I have a feeling that trend is going to continue with Aki. This is the weird one. So she's got this new uh, funny slithery stance thing, sinister slide. And she's got a second kind of low option. I guess this is the replacement for her old coward crouch. It's basically Fang's coward crouch, but she can move during it. And she's got a lot more follow ups here. So it goes under projectiles. It has the dive follow-up, which goes through fireballs and has a lot of range, but is super unsafe. Yeah, it also applies poison. Now, this is the interesting one. So. Heal Strike. 
if you didn't if you didn't play Street Fighter Five, uh, this was the single best move in Fang's entire arsenal. This move was like 99% of the reason that Fang was decent in the later seasons. Coward Crouch Roll was two hits. It was plus on block. It was fast. It was hard to check. It low profiled stuff. I think. Uh, I think the plus frames are probably dead in this game. They might have made it safe. It does still seem to low profile. Because you can see here it's breaking the DI. Even though it's only two hits. So it's low profile throughout. So it's not a free DI. Uh, you do get a link afterwards. It does mention in the text that it's not on the same level as the masters. So I think that's their way of sort of subtly saying, yeah, this isn't plus anymore. It would be too good if it was plus, and it beat DI, I think. You can combo into it. That seems to be the trade-off here. Uh, in Street Fighter V, Fang could not cancel any normal into Coward Crouch. You had to do Coward Crouch from neutral. You couldn't do like a normal into Coward Crouch. There was no cancels at all. Uh, whereas uh, Aki actually can combo into it. She, see, she cancels into Coward Crouch, and then goes into the follow-up, and then gets a combo afterwards. So it looks like they've kind of retooled it a bit from uh, a pressure tool into a combo slash low profile tool. And then we've got the command grab. It's hard to say how good this is going to be. This could this will probably be similar to um, JP's command grab. Where she's got so many projectiles and so many like remote space control tools that she's trying to catch you, like, uh, parrying. And then, as you saw there, you get grabbed out of grabbed out of the parry. I think that's the main reason for this command grab. I don't think, I don't think you're meant to just use it, like, raw. It's probably meant to be, like, a, a parry punish. It's got the level 1. Knocks you into the air, and you get poisoned. I think all of her supers poison you. Maybe not the level 3, actually. It is invincible. Another huge thing to mention, uh, invincible level 1s have not been given to every character, specifically Zoners. So like, uh, Dalsim does not have an invincible level 1, and he's got good zoning tools. DJ does not have an invincible level 1, and he's got some zoning tools, he's not as much of a zoner. They've, they've kind of been inconsistent, because like, Guile and JP do have invincible level 1s, but like, Dalsim and DJ don't. But this is good to know. Having an invincible level 1 is always a good thing. The more the more reversals you have, the better. And this also ensures that people are not going to autopilot throw on your wake up. Because as we saw earlier, throw is going to beat the EX command dash on wake up. So having an option that beats throw with the level 1 is good. This is actually good. Level 2. So you can control, you can control the trajectory of this with the button that you press. It looks fast on startup, and it leaves behind a great big pool of poison, which it says stays around for a long time. So you can probably like um, hit this and then build a bunch of momentum afterwards. The range also suggests this will punish fireballs. It's, it's hard to know for sure, but it looks like this could be like a full screen fireball punish. So like this, that's crazy. Like the, the, the pool stays out for so long. Look how long this pool is out for, right? You land the level two and the pool gets put down on the floor and then it stays active. Walk up, neutral jump, massive combo, bunch of toxic blossom extensions. Still the pool is down afterwards. They wait a few seconds and it's still there. We don't even see it dissipating. Like the clip ends before the pool goes away. That could be a very good level two. And the level three. Ah, 
damn, look at this combo, man. That's so sick. I don't have much to say other than that combo is so sick. I don't know. People, people are using this clip right here. Hang on, I'll, I'll let the CA play out before I before I say this. <laughs> that face, though. That face when you nut, but she keeps sucking. I was gonna say, and then I forgot, but uh, there's that clip at the end of the Aki gameplay where she's beating the shit out of JP and like weaving in and out of all his projectiles. And I've seen a bunch of, pe bunch of people be like, finally, the JP counter pick that we've all been waiting for. And obviously I don't know for sure, but I'd say that do not get your hopes up. There is a very low chance that Aki actually is a JP counter pick because right now there aren't really any JP counter picks. Bruh. This win animation, though. In conclusion, Aki looks incredible. I'm so looking forward to playing this character. And I will see you guys in the next video.